everyone and welcome to Headlines today. I'm Anna and then Vettikard. Now, usually when I do interviews with senior actors, the interview ends up being a nostalgia trip. But my guest today is someone who has such a packed schedule coming up that his diary would probably get many a teenager exhausted. So on this show, we'll do a little bit of looking back, a lot of looking forward. But first of all, I'd like to congratulate him for the good news he's just received. Amitabh Bachchan, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks very your- much, Anna. Fourth National Award. How does... Do you even remember how you felt when you won your first National Award? Yeah, I was surprised uh, that uh, there was a category that was, uh, you know, recognizing newcomers on national level. So that was a surprise and I was very happy to have received that uh, for my very first film. Um, Subsequently, uh, uh, then the next opportunity was uh, when I got uh, an award for Agnipat, then Black, and now Pa. So it's all been a very exciting uh, journey, and uh, every time it's been uh, wonderful to receive this award. How does the National Award, though, I mean, of course, it's a very prestigious award, but does it help in terms of being able to sell the film further or get more markets for the film, or is that now over and done with? Yeah, I think it's it's way past the release of the of the film. Mm. But uh, yes, it remains as a as nostalgia, works for posterity. Um, there's a great identity with it. For you, though, what do you think it was? What do you what for you? What was the most challenging part of doing the role of Oro in Pa? Well, I think just the the, the concept of uh, playing a, a 13 year old at the age of 68. Um, how Balki was going to convert me uh, into that look. The process of makeup, uh, the enactment of the role, uh, all was uh, very challenging. And uh, I'm happy that uh, Balki chose to do that with me because uh, I think all artists look forward to a moment when uh, uh, when they feel that this is something that they can um, be challenged by, they can um, want to put their teeth into it and... Uh, and uh, be able to do some kind of creativity which they haven't done before. What do you think it was that got you the award? I have no idea. <laughs> what have people said to you when they saw your performance? Apart from, I mean, I don't mean just they general. Liked it, yeah. they, just they, general, they liked it, yeah. They liked it, but specifics. Well, for, for one, they, they, some of them said that, you know, we, we tried to look for you in the film and we couldn't find you. Um, it was all oral. Which is basically what Balki wanted. He did not want uh, uh, anything that I was ever associated with in the past um, uh, to sort of uh, find its way into the character of Oro. Um, whether it was uh, uh, the look, the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he behaved. Um, and then after the film was over, even during the old strategy of marketing the film, uh, Balki was very sure that he did not want me to personally come on to sell the film. Uh, it was always Oro that was talking about it. So, uh, Indeed, there was a time when uh, when we were looking at the credit titles and uh, um, he said, uh, we would not put your name in the credit titles. And, and right at the end, it would say, and Oro, uh, introducing Oro. In fact, when Jaya introduces the credit titles, she actually does uh, say that. Um, so there was a, a deliberate attempt on the part of Balki to make sure that uh, that this was a character which was uh, independent and it was uh, isolated from anything else that I was needed to be associated with. Uh, and that's what came through. And um, a lot of people made that remark. Of the roles for which you've got national awards, now there are four. Um, just in terms of, this is obviously a very physically challenging role, right, in power. But in terms of the acting, which did you find? Which do you now think was the most challenging? All of them, I think. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to categorize them and say this was better than the other. We never can. Uh, so we leave it to the judges and the juries of these various institutions that honor us. Okay. Um, though, when the national awards come about eight nine months after most of the other awards have been given, almost all the other awards have been given. Um, Does it not, I mean, do you not sometimes feel that the national awards should perhaps organize themselves a little better, be, uh, you know, be more on time, be part of the award season? Um, And uh, there are many other criticisms of the national awards. Would you have 
I, I, you know, uh, I think that the national awards are now almost catching up with uh, with themselves. Uh, they have been delayed for various reasons. Uh, I believe there was some litigation, uh, there were some court procedures in, in some of the previous years. Uh, once that starts, then you, you can't do any activity. But I believe that uh, not only has the announcement this year been a little ahead of time from from the normal time that it used to come out, and I believe that uh, the presentation itself is, is uh, going to take place perhaps next month. Uh, so I think that the the whole act is now they're catching up, and uh, who is to decide uh, what is the award time? I mean, you know, this is something also that is in a region where you will have to leave it to the individual institution. Um, there are many um, film magazines, Screen, Film Fair, um, IFA that does awards, and uh, they all do it suiting their convenience. But who is to decide? Sort of award season, you know, Film Fair, Screen, all of these come around the yeah, same they come, time. Yeah, they come at a particular time yeah. because they feel it, it is uh, just conducive to be uh, having the award at that point of time. Uh, and because there obviously is uh, uh, competition uh, amongst various uh, award ceremonies, therefore there is perhaps uh, the impression that uh, they're all coming together and therefore this is the season for awards. Um, this is an individual opinion. I don't think that we can stipulate that this is the period, you know, January is the month for awards or, or June is or December is. Uh, you would have to leave that to the institution. But you know, yes, the like time period should not be uh, too far gone. Uh, I think if an entire year is stipulated from, say, January to December, then the sooner the awards come soon after. Uh, you know, there is a kind of a memory. In any case, um, uh, uh, films that are released and in the earlier part of the year sometimes almost get neglected because um, they're not too visible. So, yes, um, perhaps uh, closer to the year ending of that particular year, uh, during which period the films are going to be judged, if the award ceremony could be held as close as possible and um, perhaps the memory remains alive and is more recent uh, and therefore more interesting. You know, of course, because I mean, you're on Twitter, you're constantly mm -hmm. interacting with the public. Um, there is always in the past few years, there has always been criticism of the national awards when it comes out. One big question is about transparency. Why are there no nominations announced? Why are we never told who else was in the reckoning? Would you uh, do you see that as a fair criticism? I think that um, the institutions that set up these awards uh, must also be setting up certain laws and certain formats within which they work. That's none of our business. That's the business of the government of India. That's the business of Filmfare, or that's the business of Screen, or that's the business of Vibe. And the uh, public? Yeah, just a minute. If in their system they have a procedure where they seek public endorsement where forms are sent out to the people and they're asked to give in their opinion and they say these are public awards, then yes, I think the public needs to know how their process was arrived at. But if it is uh, a, a private jury or a private institution, then you just go with what they say. Okay, but you know, if just as they are, they're transparent about who is on the jury, in the same way, if they could be transparent about who was in the reckoning, considering that this is a public demand that has no, been I think coming that up in the over press, the years. I think in the press they have mentioned uh, who the other films were or what the other films were. No, in fact, at the press conference they made it very clear that we, you know, these, what happens is that there are rumors about who is, people might speak off the record, but officially there are no nominations. Oh, okay. Well, but we'll have to follow what the, uh, the format for these, uh, for these award ceremonies or the procedures are laid down by the institution that's actually um, uh, taking care of it. I don't think that uh, it would bother me. All right, fine. Um, when you look at the thin young man who did Saath Hindustani, and um, you look back at that film now, when first of all, I want to know when was the last time you saw Saath Hindustani? Oh, many, many years ago. Yeah. Do you watch your films again? Yes, if I get an opportunity sometimes. Uh, we keep watching it on television now and then. Uh, um, and yes, sometimes, you, you know, you're on a flight or something and you find an old film with yours. Uh, you want to visit it sometimes, yes. So when you see, um, when you see Agni Bhatt, what do you look at and what do you think you could have improved? Uh, yeah, many things. I think uh, now that we look back, uh, 
there are many scenes which I felt we, uh, I could have, you know, perhaps improved on it. But as I said, that is the ultimate decision of the director. He is the, uh, the ultimate authority. And if he thought that this is what it is, then we go with it. Right. We can have individual opinions and, you know, I can have my own thought process of how a particular scene needs to be done. But somewhere we have to draw the line and, and go with what the director wants because after all, uh, it is his film and it is his decision. Okay. Mr. Bachchan, do you think though of things like legacy? Do you think of what your legacy will be? I mean, uh, you're working very, you're working right now, but still, do you think of what your legacy will be? Yeah, why not? So what would you like your legacy to be? I would want Abhishek to feel that, you know, I was a good human being and a good father. And Shweta? Absolutely, same thing. But the public? The film viewing public? That is uh, something that I will carry with me. Uh, their love and affection, um, their devotion, fan following, uh, whatever they have uh, contributed in, in my career, that will never leave me. Uh, what they think of me afterwards, or after I'm gone, is their decision and their opinion. Uh, I cannot possibly uh, want to influence that. I should not. Uh, they must uh, uh, be, in all fairness, it is their opinion and their decision. But do you think of sometimes what you would want the public to remember you by? Yeah, I hope they remember me as a good human being. That will be more than satisfactory. How do you find the direct interaction that you have with the public right now, though? Because Twitter is a, it's a mixed bag, right? There are people who are kind, genuine, and then there are people who can be pretty cruel also. Yes, that's very welcome. It doesn't hurt? Uh, I think if you're in a forum which is involving um, uh, the, the public, then you must be prepared for that. Uh, Life isn't all, you know, honey and roses. It's there's a lot of there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of abuse. Uh, we are in a profession where uh, we are constantly asking endorsement from the public, and uh, they have a right as a free citizen to express themselves. But criticism is fine. Why is abuse fine? Well, that's their point of view. Um, okay, you don't think that's in unfair? For a person to abuse if, if you simply if because you've given them an opportunity to have direct interaction Yeah, that's fair enough. You? Yeah, I, I don't mind that. But if it's going to come on a forum which is going to get public, then the language and the usage of the language should be controlled. So if there are, there are words and there are expressions used, which I find are unethical, um, X-rated, um, and I feel that I'm not comfortable either reading it or listening to it or seeing it in print, uh, I warn them and I tell them that this kind of language is wrong and I'm deleting you. There was a person actually sending you not just abusive comments on your blog but also actually SMSing you, right? That's right, yeah. Okay. Um, but for you, I mean, because you said, you know, it's a public forum and people, but I mean, you know, how can you, there's a, there are actually so many people out there. How much can you control? You cannot. Why do you expose yourself to this? How, how can you stop it? Uh, why are you on Twitter? Why Doesn't not? it hurt you? No, I don't think that uh, I'm going to get off the Twitter just because there's one crazy guy who's abusing me. But there are more than one crazy guy. Okay, around. let them be millions. But there are many others who are also friendly and nice and conversational and intelligent and make a very valuable contribution. Uh, I would not like to ignore that. Uh, but, you know, the difference between, um, let's say, 40 years ago, stars 40 years ago and now is that now stars are so much out there and it's not just about interviews but they're on Twitter, they're blogging and do you sometimes feel nostalgia for the times when a star meant an unreachable person? No, I, I think you have to move along with the medium. The medium of uh, television has uh, in any case uh, diminished our so-called star status that you talk of. You cannot stop a television camera from standing outside your home every time you step out or peeping inside your home um, through various other means. Um, there are laws and regulations and you can move that, but it's not possible to stop them. So in any case, these mediums are going to be writing about it. They are going to be, you know, exhibiting what you're doing, where you go, what you wore, what you said. It's, it's, it's so easily available to them because of the medium, because of the construct of the media and no matter how hard we may try to be away from them it has now become an impossibility so when you can't beat them you join them yes but 
when the media covers you, you're still the distant star to the public. Okay. Whereas when you're on Twitter and um, you're blogging, then you are constantly, you're getting direct feedback from the public, of course, which right. is great. But you're also, that means, directly available to anyone and everyone. Does that, do you think people... I mean, I don't know. Do you think people will perhaps begin to value stars a little less because of the direct availability? Yeah, uh, I've started this about a year and a half ago. That's when I'm 67, 68. I don't see anything further happening to me as far as putting myself into some kind of an exclusive club is concerned. I think I'm way past that time. So in my last moments, let me at least breathe easily with my fans. We've never gotten an opportunity uh, to be face to face with many of our fans. Uh, we had the fan mail and we had the letters and we have the odd person who will, um, who will bump into you or accost you in a hotel or in a public area. But other than that, we've never really got an opportunity to speak to them, to know what they really feel, to understand them, to um, just know who they are and what they feel. I think the blog, through its responses, social networking, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or whatever, has given us this opportunity to be able to sit across somebody and continuously talk to them. And how marvelous this is for me, I think. I, I've developed uh, uh, such a fondness for those people that interact with me. Uh, I now get an opportunity to not only know who they are in personal life, but they also know a lot of personal things about me. I get an opportunity to meet them. Uh, I travel quite often. Uh, to different parts of the world and if there are members of the blog which or the Twitter which are in the vicinity uh, they call me in the Twitter and we meet up and we formed uh, this wonderful community you've actually met people who yeah, you sure. met through Twitter yes okay and and members from my blog I recently had a performance in Paris a couple of months ago and all those wonderful members of my extended family which I now address them as um, were informed of this and a lot of them flew in from Germany, from France, from, from Italy, from, from Spain, from New York, from London and they all came to this one show of mine and we met them and it was great. Uh, I'm now having a bunch of them uh, coming across from all different parts of the world from, from South Africa, from America and very close to my birthday and they, you know, we want to meet up every time I go to London or something. Uh, you know, this small little community spreads the world around, and we meet up and we talk and we discuss, and and it's it's just a wonderful feeling. I mean, what's wrong with that? There was this comment, of course, that you had made on uh, Twitter about uh, Ravan, right? And there was immediate feedback, which again I saw from the people that were following you. Uh, do you now regret having said on Twitter what you did about uh, uh, Abhishek's performance not having been as bad as people thought and it was really primarily because of the editing? Yeah, I was having a chat with, uh, with uh, Jitesh Pillai from Filmfare. Um, and I was new to Twitter, so I didn't know that everything that I talked to him was going out. Uh, he was... Uh, oh, you didn't know that? No. Okay. Uh, but even if they did, I, I haven't said anything or anything wrong that I do not want to say now. Um, uh, I think he was, he was unhappy with, with, uh, with Mani Ratnam. He said, my God has got feet of clay. Um, and then he said, you know, I, the, the performances were inconsistent. I was merely explaining to him that there was uh, certain portions that were edited off uh, even where the performance was concerned. Um, Beera, the character of Abhishek, uh, every time he was confronted with a situation or, uh, or an issue, um, uh, keeping in mind with, uh, in tune with the title, 10 Abhishek heads used to appear on screen visually and each one of them were giving different opinions to him as to how he should react. And um, then he would, uh, in one violent movement, get rid of them and then he would become just Bira and then say what he felt. That was the process of his mind, which was visually shown. Uh, I think Mani felt that he did not want to keep that. And therefore, that portion when those heads appeared were removed and the beginning and the end of that was kept, which is why you felt, why is this guy behaving so crazily? It was actually him wanting to get rid of those 
10 images. That's all that I was explaining. I've never uh, c complained about the editing. I merely said, this is a process that happened by which you may have felt that there is inconsistency. But that's nothing else happened. Okay. But, but you know, there were reactions if to you it? can do, yeah, reactions are there were reactions obviously going to, to happen. It? When you do a cut paste job, it's the easiest thing to get um, a reaction. Yeah, but there were reactions to it, um, not just from the media, but also I saw the tweets that you got in response. And I know that Vikram, for instance, said, look, it was the same editor and the same director. People didn't have a problem with the Tamil version. Yeah, a lot of that is played you, out because, uh, uh, firstly, uh, Mani Ratnam never reacted. Uh, it was a fake ID, and the press picked that up and took all his reactions or so. He was fine. And, and yeah, we no, met I'm after not the referring trip, yeah. to money at all because I'm, I'm talking about Vikram because he had he had in an interview to us, in fact, said, look, it was the same editor and same director. People didn't have a problem with the Tamil version. So Quite possible. That's, that's fine. Okay, but the immediacy of the reactions, because you said you were having a conversation with one person, but it is a public forum, and there was there is this immediacy of reactions because of that. You do not regret that comment at no, all? No, not at all. I haven't made anything wrong. Well, I tweeted this interview, okay. and some of our viewers have sent in questions. Suarez wants to know, how did you find SRK as a KBC host? He was very good. Uh, I, I saw a couple of the episodes, and uh, it was very bright and light, and you know how Sharok is in, in real life and in, on the screen. It's, it's just wonderful. Chitra says, when are you going to write a book? Uh, I don't need to. Uh, I don't see, firstly, um, having the capacity or the ability to write one. Uh, and I don't think that there's anything worthy of writing. If you can write a blog, why can't you write a book? You there's have the capacity things. to write a blog. No, but the, the blog is terrible. I mean, you know, my writing is terrible. But what about, I mean, don't you want to write your autobiography? No, I do not. Why is that? Said. <laughs> why is that? Because after why comes said. <laughs> but then after that, there's an ABC all over again. Yeah. You can't go back there again. People are curious. I'm also curious. And they'd like to know in your words. I can't write. You can't write. I know that you are saying that you've been banished from your household because you're late for lunch because of yeah. me. So I'm going to say thank, thank you, you so much to thank you, you much. and all the best.